Hello, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. I hope you all had a wonderful holiday. I am still in the holiday spirit, as you can tell. Um, I'm just going to be over here making spirits bright. Um, you know, everyone's over Christmas at this point because it's New Year's Day, but Christmas isn't over. We're only like halfway through. Um, so I'm wishing all of you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I hope you had fun last night. I went to bed around 930. Um, just too old for the for the New Year's Eve thing. I actually went out to an Irish pub and had a toast at five o'clock. Um, which was uh, midnight in Ireland. And I was like, this is perfect because I can be in bed by 8.30 or 9. Um, but anyway, I hope that you all are doing well. I titled this episode Ellen's Annual Appeal. Um, this is actually a little distracting. I feel like it's going to give me a seizure or something. Maybe I should just turn it off. There, that's better. Um, what was I saying? Um... I totally lost my train of thought because I put absolutely no preparation into making this video whatsoever. Um, I was saying something about, oh, Ellen's annual appeal. Yes. So I've actually never done an annual appeal before, um, but I think I'm going to have to start doing that, which is why I'm, I'm going to explain that to you guys in this episode that I did very little preparation for other than finding some fun uh, lights to put on my head. Um, this is the Catholics Against Militarism podcast. It's been around since 2019. Um, I was on a brief hiatus for like a good year there, but then I came back in 2023. And as we do at the end of the year, we kind of reassess, where have I been? Where am I? Where am I going? Where do I want to go? Um, so you think about the past and the present and the future. And I've done a little bit of, of thinking about that over the holidays, over the last month or so, doing a little praying about it with regard to this podcast. Um, and I'd like to share uh, my, uh, my appeal uh, uh, for you today. Um, the bishops do an annual appeal um, every year. And if you ask me, um, if you're going to give money to somebody, I think you should give it to me instead of them. But sorry. <laughs> they have enough money from the U.S. government, right? They get tons of money from the U.S. government. They're fine. Um, anyway, this is an annual appeal because as I've taken stock of things, I've realized that I... Um, I need to make some choices in the near future. For those of you who are new, the Catholics Against Militarism podcast is a podcast. It's an audio podcast. It's also a YouTube channel. Um, I was looking at some stats this morning because they kind of send out some um, here's your year in review type things. And this year, even though I only did two episodes a month on my audio podcast, um, I did 24 episodes that were published on my audio version, which is done through Buzzsprout. I publish it there and then it goes out to like Apple and Google and I don't even know where it goes. I don't know if these statistics include just the Buzzsprout listens or all the listens from all the different places that they go. I have no idea. But apparently my podcast grew by 33% this year. Um, I had 2,618 downloads um, on the audio version in 26 countries. Um, and as for YouTube, um, I finally hit 2,500 subscribers, which I know is small potatoes in the podcast YouTube world. But for me, it's a big deal, especially since I've always done this podcast purely as a hobby. I've never monetized this channel. I have never gotten a cent from anything from Google or YouTube. They're, mon they're making money off my content, but I, for a variety of reasons, have never monetized this channel. Um, but nonetheless, um, this year, I had 55,238 um, listens, I believe. And according to YouTube, I would have made $7.62. <laughs> I don't understand that. 55,000 um, you know, listens and $7.62. I, I never saw the $7.62 because, like I said, I never set up the monetization. But I think it's telling me that's how much I would have made. Which makes me question like how people make their living on YouTube. You must be have to be really big to ever make any money on YouTube. Um, which is why you always see people going like, subscribe, comment, subscribe. You know, they're trying to grow their channel. Um, I don't annoy you guys with all those persistent, constant requests and solicitations because I'm just doing this to get out, you know, what I see as the good news of the gospel. And it's an education thing and it's kind of a passion project for me. But it's kind of cool to see that even though I haven't monetized and I haven't pushed 
and I don't advertise things. Um, the word is kind of getting out. Over, a li over the lifetime of my channel, I think I've had 165,000 views or listens or something, which seems like a lot um, for me anyway. And um, people have spent 32,000 hours listening to my content. Um, and I would have made over the course of four years of doing this on YouTube, $14 and 71 cents, literally $14. I, I find that hard to believe for 32,000 hours of content and listening that people have done, but whatever. Um, if you divided that $14 uh, and 71 cents by the amount of time I've put into making these videos, setting up these interviews, preparing for the interviews, editing the, the videos, publishing the videos, I'd probably be making about 0. 0.000001 cent an hour. But like I said, I've never really done this channel um, to try to earn an income. It's really just been something I've done on my own time as a volunteer, a volunteer for God, if you will. Um, but as I said, I've been thinking a little bit about where, where this podcast is going and I've realized that um, in the last, you know, month, you know, I've I've got these content calendar for my Catholics Against YouTube or Catholics Against uh, Militarism podcast, and I always have all these great plans. I've got a list a mile long of episodes that I want to do, topics I want to cover, people I want to interview, satire that I want to do. Um, but I just don't get around to doing it. So every week I look at my content calendar, and lately I've just been going next week next week. Maybe I'll have time for that next week, next week. Um, and the main reason is because this past year I started a business, um, which I've talked about on the channel before. I, um, I used to be an online teacher. I used to have a salary. I used to work for a school, um, which was kind of a good deal because I would just like, sh I would get a, sad, a paycheck and I would just show up and I would teach. I would do my thing. There were just students in the classroom. They were amazing. And it was all just there. And I just showed up and I taught. Um, I left that job in 2022 um, and decided to start my own company and teach online. And that has taken a while to build up. There are some promising things happening. I'm happy with, that it's growing, but it's, I'm not quite in a place yet where that's like, you know, can be a full time job for me. But I did quit my other job. I had actually, I was doing my business and I had two part time jobs over the summer one of which was babysitting, which I haven't done since I was in college. But I knew this single dad, and he had this kid, and there was a situation. And I was like, I'll help you out. I'll, I'll watch your kid one day a week, which was a lot of fun. Um, but I was doing a business, working two part-time jobs, and doing the podcast. You know, it's a lot to, to do. So um, I couldn't do it anymore. So I, I figured this business is never going to take off if I continue working these other part-time jobs. There's a point as a business owner, if you guys have ever started a business, where you just have to make the leap and do it full-time. So that's what I've been doing. And um, I realized that the more attention that that needs to, to nurture that business, to grow that business, it's not like I just show up and teach anymore, right? Like I have to get my own students. I have to promote my own services. I have to advertise. I'm doing everything as a solopreneur um, for this business, um, not only teaching in the business, but all the tech stuff, all the finance stuff, all the promotions, marketing, every aspect of the business I'm doing. So what I'm realizing is that I just have no time anymore. Um, and unlike when I used to be in a different situation with a full-time job and had weekends and evenings free, I just don't have that much free time anymore. Everything that I do, I feel like I need to be thinking about how am I paying my rent? How am I paying for groceries? Basic necessities of life. So at any given moment when I'm like, I need to get back to the, the podcast and produce more content and I need to, to do these interviews, I'm thinking, well, or I could spend time doing this other business, which might actually help me pay my rent. So as I've looked ahead at 2024, I've really thought long and hard about, can I even continue doing this podcast just with the amount of time that it takes? Um, it may look like I just pop in front of my camera and just do these episodes or have an interview, but they really do take a lot of time to um, set up and prepare for to do it right, um, and then to edit it and to publish it, all that stuff. Um, I've had a few people in the comments over the past year say, like, your audio really sucks. No one can hear you, you know, and 
I realized that my, you know, microphone was um, old. It was four years old. It wasn't really working anymore. So I had to get a new microphone. That costs money. And it also costs money just to host the, the podcast. So I don't think that I can continue to do this podcast anymore for free. And I was thinking, do I have to cut one more thing out of my life so that I can focus even more on my business, spend more time on that? And I, I prayed about it for a while, and I felt like God was telling me, you know, why don't you just ask for help? <laughs> why don't you just ask people to support you? If people find this content valuable and important, which I think it's very important, maybe they will be willing to help support you in the creation of that content. And I thought, wow, that's a novel idea. Everyone else on the internet does that. I don't know why, <laughs> I don't know why that's never occurred to me. Um, like I said, I've never wanted to monetize through YouTube, mainly because, you know, then they can kind of control you. I mean, they can kind of control you anyway, but um, I've already got two strikes on this channel and um, they they invited me to go to this like re-education camp, um, a digital re a digital I'm in like, I was in a digital gulag for a while, like they completely shut me down. And then I came back and they're like, you can re-educate yourself on what's appropriate to talk about and not talk about by going to this. And then you can get these violations like wiped away or something. And I was like, I don't want to go. You go to a re-education camp. You guys were the ones telling me what I couldn't talk about in 2020. And since then, data has come out to prove that I was right and you were wrong. So I think you need to go to a re-education camp. But there's no one actually at Google you can ever talk to. And I woke up this morning to an email telling me that I was in violation of the Google Ads policy and I've been suspended again or something. And I'm just like, what? I'm not even running Google Ads. So that started my year off. Um, and I started, I woke up looking like this cat, you know, just like, I, I hate Google. I hate meta. I hate Facebook. I hate all this big tech censorship and everything. Um, so I'm like, I don't want to work with you. I don't want to be dependent on you for any money. And I just feel like my time on YouTube is sort of like limited anyway. So I don't want to like try to monetize and, and try to get money from YouTube when they're just going to keep cracking down on me for random stuff. I don't even know what I'm doing wrong. Um, anyway, this is a huge rant, but that's all to say that if, if you would like to support me, I'd really rather just appeal to you for support rather than trying to work with YouTube to like monetize my channel and grow my channel because I honestly think I'm going to not be on here much longer. I, would be, I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of 2024 some kind of crackdown happens and I get kicked off or something. So um, I would like to migrate to a free speech pl platform anyway. So yeah, it's like, do I want to invest time in like trying to like make YouTube work or do I just want to plan my exit and appeal to you directly for support? So I would like to do that today. I would like to, if you find this um, channel important, um, I, I can honestly say I don't think there's any other Catholic channels out there that are talking about the things that I talk about on this channel. Nobody talks about it. I've even thought about doing an episode, you know, grading the other big Catholic YouTubers on like how they do on the question of violence, war, um, because even in the midst of this Israel Gaza thing, like if they talk about it, they're just talking about it in terms of like, Gosh, those people in the Middle East are not fighting proportional wars. They're not being proportional. Like as if Jesus came to tell us to fight proportional wars. Like it, this is not going to save us, people. This whole natural law thing is not going to save us. That's not why Jesus came. That's not how we're going to reach the kingdom of heaven. That's not how we're going to bring about the kingdom of heaven on earth is through fighting proportional wars and self-defense only when we can all agree that they're just, okay? And I know I'm going on a rant, but I've been, you know, I've, I've been watching all of this happen over the last two months, and I've been wanting to do so many more episodes with um, different people, and I feel like it's a real teaching opportunity, but I just, oh, I don't have time to do it, because like I said, you know, I've got to make a living, and I just can't keep spending so much time cranking out, like, content on this channel um, when, you know, I'm like looking at my bills that are coming due and I'm like, oh, I need to focus on making a little bit of income. So um, anyway, it's kind of a lost opportunity. I feel like there's a lot going on right now that I could be talking about on this channel. But the good news is that um, the four years of content that I've made, you know, I, you guys don't see this as listeners, but I see all the comments that come in. So I'm seeing people coming in, watching videos that I did three years ago and going, wow, I just discovered your channel. And like, where where have you been? And how come I've never heard of this? And this is so interesting. And 
I listened to this interview and then I got pulled in and I started listening to your other content. And so I'm seeing people coming to this channel and discovering conversations and dialogues about things that just, things that are just not being talked about anywhere in the Catholic world. Um, and it seems like it's just, it's hitting a niche, it's hitting a very important niche, a, a, a gap in, in the conversation here at this channel. And so if you want to support me, I'm going to give you a few ways that you can do that so I can continue to do this channel um, and, and maybe also eat. <laughs> I need to eat. Um, so if you have, if you're not in a position to be able to send money, um, that is okay. Like I'm going to give you like a variety of ways that you can support me and they do not involve all um, giving me money. Um, so the first way that you can support me, if you're interested in supporting the channel and, and helping me to produce more content, interview more people, um, is to send me money. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to put um, my Venmo down in the description of the video, and I'm also going to put my address. It's not my physical address. Don't worry. I'm not putting my physical address on the Internet. It looks like a home address, but it's actually a P.O. box address. So if you'd like to send me a money through Venmo or if you'd like to send me a check, you can just make it out to Ellen Finnegan, my name, and um, send it to that address. Do not put the word P.O. box because even though it is a P.O. box, if you put P.O. Box, the post office gets confused. So just write it exactly as it's written there, and it should it should make it to me. And if you were willing to support me in that way, that would be amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, but I'm also, if you would, I, I don't just want to ask you to give me money, even though I do think there's something of value in the videos I produce. But I'd like to also give you ways to get something in return. Um, so through my um, education company, my new company, it's been kind of fun because I initially was thinking about just teaching homeschooled kids. Um, but what I've learned through this channel is there's actually a lot of adults out there who are interested in learning as well, as we all should be. We should all be lifelong learners, constantly learning, constantly learning. And um, so I did the retreat with Father McCarthy in November, which was great. Had 20 people sign up for that. This is such a huge help. Um, so for those of you who, who signed up for that and participated, it meant the world to me. It's just, it was great to see that there are people out there um, that are interested in these topics and um, willing to support support the channel, support Father McCarthy, um, and, and get together and do this retreat. And, um, some really cool, it was just neat to meet people like that had been listening to the podcast for a long time. I could put faces with names. And I found that at the end of the retreat, I didn't really want it to end. Like I didn't want to lose touch with these people. And I also did the adult class with E. Michael Jones over the fall. And that went for 15 weeks. We met for one hour a week. And uh, like the retreat, it was like, wow, there's just so many interesting people in this class. Like, I'm so grateful to have met these people. And so in addition to the great opportunity to speak with, you know, uh, Dr. Jones and Father McCarthy, and it was just a great opportunity to meet like-minded people. Um, and I found that likewise, I didn't want to like, lose touch with all these people. And a lot of us in the class were like, how can we continue to um, talk about these things and learn together. So a few people from the E. Michael Jones class have started their separate book club, and um, I'm going to participate in that. But I also wanted to create maybe an online community of sorts um, where people can continue to um, talk or meet. And so what I did is I'm, I'm creating a circle, like an online, it's called Circle, and it's like an online community kind of thing that's a little... Um, a little more private than just like a general um, Facebook page or something like that, and hopefully a little less annoying than social media. So what I'd like to do is invite you to this circle. If you're a listener of this podcast, you like the content that you find here, um, I you can join for free my circle. I'll put the link below. So that I'll be option number two to support me. Even if you don't want to pay, just join the free membership. It'll give us a way to keep in touch. If you want to keep in touch with Catholics Against Militarism and if I get kicked off YouTube one day, like we'll have a way of keeping in touch. It's just a way of interacting and having a little bit of exchange and community outside of like YouTube comments or like annoying because YouTube is kind of annoying. Um, but in addition to that, over at the circle, I'm going to start a book club. 
So the idea was after the retreat that we did on gospel nonviolence in November, that was really about the spirituality of gospel nonviolence. That's what Behold the Lamb is all about. But there's also the history of gospel nonviolence. And so a book that I've read before that I really love and I've always wanted to revisit is called The Catholic Peace Tradition. Um, this is just full, jam-packed full of fascinating, interesting historical information about p the peace movement and the church and different groups going back to the time of Christ. And it basically goes through the centuries. Um, so it goes through the centuries. It's um, Catholic definition of peace, um, the context and message of peace in the New Testament, peacemaking in the early church from Paul to Constantine, Christian peace and the barbarians from Constantine to Charlemagne, from Car uh, Carol Carolingi Carolingian peace, I'm sorry, I don't even know what that is, to people's peace, 800 to 1100, 1100 to 1400, the era of the Crusades. So yeah, like everyone's heard about the Crusades, but like what were the peacemakers during, doing during that time? Like no one ever knows about that. Alternatives to the Crusades, um, the papacy as peacemaker, arbitration, canon law, and the rights of conscience from 1100 to 1500, humanist peacemakers in the 16th century, missionary peacemaking, um, so lessons of the 20th century, um, Benedict the 15th and World War I, Pius XI and the dictators, Pius, the, so there's just, it's jam-packed. Um, so, and it's very, very easy reading. And I really, really can't wait to read this, like, in a group. Um, so if you'd like, you can join the book club. So if you join the circle, totally free, it's just a way to kind of connect with other people. Just join, check it out, see who's there. Um, it's very small right now, but I'm hoping it'll grow. If you would like, you can join the book club for $20 a month. Come on, guys, $20. Um, so $20 a month, we're going to meet on the 15th of every month and on the last day of the month. So... And we're going to read this book for like 14 weeks. We're going to read this book through April. So it's going to be a really easy book club because we're reading like 15 pages a week. And this book is just very well written and easy to read. But the thing about it is there's so many footnotes and there's so many like interesting things that you can explore. So what I'm hoping is that we'll just go through it nice and slowly together. We'll meet once, um, we'll meet in the evening so it'll be like 5 o'clock Pacific, 8 o'clock Eastern, um, twice a month on the 15th and on the last day. This also means that like it's not like, oh, if you have a stand, if it's always on Wednesday and you have a standing obligation on Wednesday, like, oh, I can't do the book club. It's like it'll fall on different days of the week. So a little harder to keep track of, but then hopefully that will let more people participate who might have, you know, conflicts. Um, but the idea is that we're going to read 15, we're going to read like one chapter a week together. We're going to go super slow through this book and you will be in the online community as well as the one hour live little book club. Um, so I'm not, the reason it's only $20 a month, which is like $10 per, <laughs> per meeting is that I'm not doing lesson plans. I'm not showing up with a PowerPoint. I'm not teaching. So this will be, um, you know, a book club. It's just a book club. It's like we get together and we talk about it. But the benefit I thought would be that if we get like several people in there, if we can get 10 or 20 people, different people could possibly look into different things that they come across in the book. So we can kind of like, if you want to look into this or and I want to look into that, I can be like, hey, guys, I'm looking into this this week. I'm going to go read this primary source and check this out. And someone else might say, oh, well, since you're doing that, I'll go look into this. And then we can post in the online community any additional things that we find or what we find that's interesting. Or when we come together to talk about it, we can share what we read. So in that way, we'll learn a lot from the book. But then we can also learn a lot from each other if, if we are all reading it together. Um, and that doesn't mean you have to do outside research. You, you don't even have to show up to the book club or read the book. You, you could just do the $20 a month as a way of supporting the book club, supporting the channel, supporting me. Um, so it's a membership for $20 a month, and it's very low, low commitment, easy read, but a fun way to maybe um, investigate the history of peacemaking the church. Um, so that's an option. So I hope you will join the circle or for free and or join the book club for $20 a month. And then we'll meet online. And so I'll hook you guys all up with the, with the online meeting space. Um, the other thing that you can do 
to support me, number three, is that um, the retreat that I did that was a live retreat in November, um, that is basically just going through the Behold the Lamb series of lectures. And that is all free online through Father McCarthy's website, the Behold the Lamb lectures. I think there's 16 of them. So we listened to all 16 in November, and we got together four different times to discuss. Um, I've written a study guide for the lectures that I think is very helpful. So the study guide, if you wanted to do that retreat, it's a free retreat. So I'll put the link to the free retreat. You can do it for free. But there's also a way that you can buy the study guide to do as you're listening to the 16 lectures. The study guide is $10. So again, $10. <laughs> if you'd like to support me, my channel, my work, um, and you'd like to do the retreat, go ahead and do the retreat through my site, and then you can buy the study guide for $10, just a way of helping me. Um, my hope is that people will want to do this retreat with a group. So if you do the retreat, you can lead this retreat on your own. Just get a group from your parish or your neighborhood or your Facebook friends or whatever, and say, hey, in 2024, does anyone want to do the Behold the Lamb retreat, which is Father McCarthy's retreat on gospel nonviolence. If you get five people together, five people want to buy the study guide, great. That's another way to help um, not only help this channel help me, but to help spread the good news of Jesus and um, his message of nonviolent love of friends and enemies. You can help to spread that to other people and help them to learn about it, which is something they've, I guarantee they've never heard before, they've never learned about because the church doesn't talk about it. So that's another way that you can support the channel, get involved, help spread the good news. Um, the fourth thing that you can do to help support me and this channel is, um, if you'd like, you can join the geocentrism class that starts on January 10th, 9th, January 9th. Um, so it starts on January 9th. It's with, it's with Dr. Robert Sungenis. I did a podcast on this um, earlier on a few episodes ago on the Catholics Against Militarism podcast. And I had a complaint in the comments. Somebody was like, this is wacky and please start another channel for this kind of content. This is not what I come here for. And I understand that, like I'm doing a little bit of overlap between the, you know, Catholics Against Militarism podcast and my teaching, which is offering some adult classes. And I know geocentrism doesn't really fit with the theme of the podcast, but that's kind of the problem for me right now is like I don't have the bandwidth to start a whole nother YouTube channel <laughs> for my company um, if I'm going to continue doing this one. So I'm kind of using this channel for like a little bit of both. Um, but it is very interesting um, if you think that geocentrism is just plain wacky, I would, I, would in, I would encourage you to download the free download that's available. I'll put that in the comments on, under number four. Um, there's a free download that shows you all the quotes that Robert Sungenis has um, compiled from Stephen Hawkins, um, Isaac Newton, Albert Einstein, major big thinkers in the world of science who have basically admitted that geocentrism the idea that the universe revolves around the earth is a possibility. And so these big major scientists have said that this is possible. Now, every time I bring this up, I brought this up with my nephew over Christmas, who's 10 years old. I said, what do you think about the idea that, that the earth is at the center of the universe? And he goes like this. That's just embarrassing, Aunt Ellen. That's embarrassing. And he's only 10 years old. And he was like, this is very embarrassing that you would even ask that question. But I have to say I am intrigued. And I'm going to take the class with Dr. Sungenis. He seems like a decent guy. He seems like a person of goodwill who really honestly believes that this is a possibility. Um, and he's spent 20 years of his life looking into it. So to me, I'm like, okay, he either he's just a liar and he knows he's lying or he really believes it and he has really good reasons for believing it. And I think he's, he's a good person who really believes it. I think he knows more about it than most of us. And I'm willing to, to hear him out. So if you'd like to take a class in the new year, it goes January 9th until March 12th. It's on Tuesday nights. Um, you could consider su supporting me by signing up. There's four seats left. Um, in the geocentrism class. So we're going to keep it to 20 people. And it costs $250. But if you use the discount code EARTH, 
I think there's one more discount code, one more coupon code. So if you use Earth, E-A-R-T-H, you can get $25 off. Um, so if you want to join that class, you're looking for something to kind of explore in the new year, open your mind, I'd recommend downloading the free download first because it's pretty interesting to read all those quotes and then that might help you make the leap to taking the class. Um, the other thing that you can do if you'd like to support me is sign up for my newsletter. So um, if you've signed up in the past, you might be like, I'm getting a lot of homeschool related emails and I don't send out that many um, <clears throat> emails because I don't have time <laughs> to like, I'm, I am the marketing department and I'm, my, my time for that is very limited. So you don't get that maybe, maybe three a month at most. Um, but now there is a way to opt in to my newsletter where you only opt in to learn about future adult classes that are going to be offered. So you won't be getting um, emails about the homeschool stuff. So if you'd like to do that, you can support me by just merely signing up for my newsletter and saying, okay, if you offer adult classes, you can email me to tell me about it. And I do have a list of five very interesting authors that um, these requests are coming in from previous students who are like, I would like to study with this person. I would like to study with this person. Fascinating, fascinating stuff. If you're a Catholic, if you're interested in intellectual matters with regard to science and um, culture and history, um, sign up for my newsletter because I'm going to be sending out um, letters this week to those authors proposing the idea of coming to teach more classes for me. So um, if those come through and if they happen, I'd like to find, I'd like to have a way to tell you about them. So even if you're not interested in geocentrism and you can't donate right now, you don't want to do the book club, maybe you'll want to take a class in the future. So it'd be great if you could sign up for my newsletter. Um, the other thing is I have a short story class that I'm teaching for um, kids age 16 to 18 that will start on January 10th. And I do need, I'm doing a seven student minimum and I'm not quite there yet. So if you know anybody who has a high schooler, who's a homeschooler, who likes creative writing or is just looking for an extra class for the semester. I know there's a lot of homeschoolers that kind of like switch up mid-year. They don't like the curriculum they're doing or whatever. They decide to change. Um, maybe you could tell them about my short story class. I'm a very good creative writing teacher. Um, not to toot my own horn, but it's going to be an awesome class. They're going to read short stories and work on writing their own. So that's another way you could support me is spread the word. Um, and then the final two ways that you can support me. Let's see, what is this? Number seven, you can subscribe to my channel. <laughs> so even though I'm not monetizing this channel on YouTube, um, it, you know, I think if you subscribe, if you listen all the time, you can subscribe and as the channel grows, I think YouTube, you know, the, algor the algorithms start to notice that there's more growth there and more, it'll generate its own momentum, you know, like it'll be put up on more people's feeds and give more people an opportunity to click. So if you think this could be like the easiest uh, form of evangel evangelism you've ever done, because if you like, if you, if you like this channel and think that the message here is important, think that you learn a lot, you can help to do a work of mercy by enlightening the ignorant and sharing that information with others without doing anything other than just clicking subscribe. That's it. And then you will do your part to generate the algorithms that will bring this channel to more people. And the other ways that you can do that are comment on the videos. So if you're listening, if you like it, if, you're, if it makes you think, if you have a thought or a question or an objection or anything, just comment and that will do the same thing as generating the algorithms, right? It's a very easy way to help this channel reach more people. And then the final thing you can do, number eight, is just pray. Pray for me. Um, Pray for, pray for peace in the world. Um, Mary tells us, you know, message of Fatima um, is that we're supposed to pray for peace um, and an end to war. And we need to do that. And but we also need to pray that we can um, understand how that comes about, right? Like, how does peace happen? Because we don't, it just doesn't happen through prayer. It happens through our active participation in the world. Um, what we choose to do, what we choose not to do. And if Catholics are out there completely ignorant about when, when Jesus says, peace, I leave, leave you, peace, I, I give to you, not as the world gives it, do I give it to you? We have to understand the difference because the world tells us that we get peace through war um, and we get peace through people fighting for, 
for the good fight, right? Um, and that's how we bring about peace. That's not at all what Jesus taught, period. That's not what he said. So we've got to promote this message, get this message out there, talk about things that for reasons we've discussed on this channel in the past, um, talk about the things that never get talked about um, and help to share the message of gospel, nonviolence, and nonviolent love of friends, of en friends and enemies. Um, and so if you would like to support me in my work on this channel, you can. I'm w sorry I'm talking so fast, but I'm going to mass today um, in 20 minutes, so I got to go. But, um, yeah, I, I guess we're not technically supposed to. In the United States, I guess we're not. If a feast day falls on a Monday or something, we're not technically required to go. But you should go. You should go. It's January 1st. It's, um, it's the World Day of Peace and... Um, the other one that I'm forgetting off the top of my head, the Mary, oh, what is it? Um, I don't know. It's a, it's an important day. So go to mass today. And um, if you would like to see more Catholics Against Militarism this year, and you'd like to help this channel grow and reach more people, consider uh, supporting me in one of those ways that I've outlined. And um, I would really, really appreciate your help and your support so I can continue to spend time on this channel and creating content and podcasts and interviews and hopefully some funny shorts that make you laugh and remind you that, um, what's that, what's that quote from Flannery O'Connor? She said, um, the maximum amount of seriousness admits the maximum amount of comedy. So only if we are secure in our beliefs, can we see the comical side of the universe? So this is a serious channel, but sometimes you just got to laugh, right? So maybe Sabrina will come back again in the future. Happy New Year. Thank you so much for listening to this. And I hope you can support me. If, no, if through nothing else, just pray. Pray for the channel. Pray for peace. Um, and thank you so much. And hopefully I'll see you again soon. All right. Bye-bye.